Combinatorics is one of my favorite areas of math. It's about how to calculate how many ways something can happen. And the reason you need a whole branch of math to figure this out is if the stuff that you're counting has restrictions on what its structure has to look like, then it can be very difficult to know if you've accounted for all the possibilities. If you've seen the words permutation or combination before, those both come from this area of math, and you can take many college classes about this entire subject, and we're going to spend uh, one week on it. So here we go. The word permutation means an ordering of something. So if I have three things, here you see I've written down all the ways I could put those three things in order, and there are six of them, so we'd say there are six permutations. If I have 10 books and I want to put them on my shelf, I have to choose which one's first and second and third. And whenever you're making that kind of choice, you're putting the things in an order. And so that means you're finding a permutation. So there's an equation that tells you how to count the total number of permutations, the total number of orderings for a set of objects. And here's what that looks like. Let's say I have n things and I want to choose r of those things and then put them in some kind of ordering. Um, you usually notate that this way. You'd say I've got n things and the p stands for permutation and I want to choose r of them to put into order. Um, you also see it sometimes notated this way. And the way that you actually calculate how many ways there are to do that is with this equation, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Um, if you don't know what factorial is, uh, let me give you an example. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, so let's do a specific example here. Let's pretend I have 100 books and I want to choose 10 of them to put on my top shelf, the most important shelf. And because I'm putting them on the shelf, I have to choose an order that they go in. So how many different ways could my top shelf look? How many ways could I choose 10 books out of 100 and then put them in some kind of ordering? So here n is 100, r is 10. So this equation tells us the answer should be 100 factorial over 90 factorial. Um, so this is the same thing as 100 times 99 times 98 all the way down to 91. What number is that? Let's jump on Wolfram Alpha. So I'll say 100 P 10. And it is calculating. And the answer seems to be this number here, which looks like 62 quintillion. Um, so that's, that's a lot of ways of placing books on shelves. Cool. There's another notation for a factorial. Well, if you just write exclamation mark, that is the number multiplied by like the smaller ones all the way down to one. Um, here, I see that like n factorial divided by n minus r factorial looks like a factorial, only it stops. So you don't go all the way down to one. There's a notation by a very famous computer scientist named Don Knuth for this. Um, this same equation can be notated n to the r power, but with a line underneath the r, and that's called a falling factorial. So in our specific example here, this would be equal to 100 to the power of 10 with a line under it. Um, but that's not 100 times 100 times 100 10 times. Really, it's 100, time, uh, it's 100 times 99 times 98 times 97. So the 10 is like how many terms there are, but each successive term is one smaller than the previous one. Falling factorial, cool. The other big one is called combinations. Um, the idea of combinations is it's the number of ways to choose a group of r things from n total things. So I've got n things, and I just want to choose a group of r of them, but it doesn't matter what order I choose them in. So for example, um, let's say we have 36 students, and I want an advisory committee. I want to like get a group of students to tell me stuff. Um, and I want there to be four students on my advisory committee. It doesn't matter who I choose first and who I choose second. All that matters to me is what's that group at the end look like? Um, so the question is how many different groups of four students are possible if I had 36 to choose from originally? And like before, there's an equation for it here. There are three common notations here, here, and here, but this bottom one is by far the most common. And the way that you pronounce it is n choose r. So for our problem, 
if I'm choosing a group of four students out of 36, you'd say, thir you'd notate it this way, and you'd read this, 36 choose four. And this is shorthand for this equation, which will tell you a specific number, and that number tells you the total number of possible groups of four that I could get if I'm choosing from 36. Um, so, so what is that number? Let's figure it out. Oh, I should have made my little bubble bigger. So my n here was 36, so that's gonna be 36 factorial divided by r factorial, so that's four factorial. And then uh, 36 minus four is 32, so then that's 32 factorial. So let's jump on over to Wolfram Alpha. So I type 36 C4 for 36 choose four, and you see it has rewritten with a proper notation here. And the answer is 58,905. So that's the total number of groups of four people I could choose. So there's what you would find in the textbook if you wanted to look it up. And uh, most textbook problems are gonna be like either a permutation problem or a combination problem. You just figure it out and plug and chug. Um, but of course, as you know, not in my class uh, because these only go so far. It's pretty easy to come up with some like pretty basic problems that don't fit this situation exactly. And if all you can do is plug and chug, then you are completely helpless if the problem situation doesn't match your thing exactly. So come back for the next video because I want you to understand how both of these equations, you don't need to memorize them. Um, these both make total intuitive sense if you can build them up from some very kind of simple-minded techniques. So that's what I want to do is I want to give you a more flexible way of both deriving these equations and extending beyond them to new types of problem situation. I will see you then. Oh, hi, Sophia.